Hello everyone, Katarina here. Welcome to this channel. So for the first video of the year, I will be showing you how to create a very quick and simple moon using the distress inks. Actually, because this moon is so quick to create, I made two cards, otherwise this video would be way too short. As I said, I will be using distress inks, but any inks that you can lift or soak up with a paper towel will work. This will create the craters or whatever they are called without hardly any effort. So let's start with my first card. Here I die cut a circle. It's the biggest size that fits on an A6 card and I placed it onto a board, which is just a laminated cardstock. And to prevent it from moving, I used a washi and I placed it on the back of the circle. The colors you use for the moon are completely up to you. I decided to go with the typical gray and I used the hickory smoke ink for that. I applied the ink over the whole circle and because I wanted to have a little bit of shade variation, I didn't apply the ink evenly. But you can of course do that if you want. You can use just one ink, which I actually did on my trial card, but I thought why not to add a darker shade, so I picked the black soot ink and I applied it on the top left side and a little bit at the bottom right side. You can also use a reference photo, which I also did. Not to copy it, I did not care that much, I just wanted to have a little bit of hint to see if I'm going the right direction. Once I was done with the ink application, I used a clean water and a brush and I sprinkled a few droplets across the circle. At some places I used the brush directly and spread the water a bit, but that's optional, you can just add the droplets. I let the water spread for a few seconds and then I took a paper towel and soaked up the water. This lifts the color where the droplets were and it creates the effect of those craters. And this is all without hardly any effort. Quick and easy. Technically, at this place, the moon is done. You can adhere it onto a card base and add a greeting. But because this took me only six minutes, I didn't want to finish yet. So I decided to play with it a bit but this is another optional thing. I applied another layer using only the hickory smoke and then I added additional droplets. The size of the droplets depends on a few things. The size of the brush and how much water you have on the brush. Bigger brush with more water on it will create bigger droplets. I was using a size 6 brush. Also, how wet the ink is. The drier the ink, the smaller the droplets will be. And also with a fresh ink, the longer you leave it on the paper, the bigger the droplets will be. This is just based on my observation, I didn't specifically test it. I just noticed when I leave a background dry overnight and then I add the splatter, the splatter is much smaller. Again, you can finish here and make your card but I wanted to create this specific crater. Here on the photo, you can see the crater at the bottom. There is this little circle and these lines that spread from the crater and I wanted to give it a try. I used a white gouache and I also squished a little bit of the hickory smoke onto the laminated cardstock. The ink I used for the tiny circle and some of the lines and the white gouache I mixed with a little bit of water and I used it to create a very bright space around the crater and other places as well and I also used it for the lines. For the lines, I used a long bristle brush in the size 1. These brushes are great for long thin lines. Although for these lines around the crater, 
I think I would need even smaller brush, maybe something like double zero. The crater and the lines did not look as I would like. What I mean, it just doesn't look like on the picture. It's not the end of the world. To try to fix it, I used a paper towel to lift the color. It did not help, it did not lift the color, but what it did, it softened the color and it looked much better. And the moon is finished. These additional steps took me extra 10 minutes. So this is truly a quick and simple thing to do. And that's why I made another background with another simple moon. For this one, I used a stencil and because I don't have an actual stencil, I made one using a circle die and an acetate. Sometimes I used a leftover cardstock to create stencils, but here I wanted to see where I'm placing the stencil and that's why I used the acetate. And for the circle, I used a slightly smaller die than the previous one. Before I started with the ink blending, I secured my cardstock onto a board using a washi tape and I also secured the stencil on top of the cardstock so it doesn't move. And the cardstock I used on both is the Canson XL watercolor cardstock. For this moon I decided to make the colors more fun and I used orange and red inks, the rusty hinge and fired brick. This time I started with the darker ink and I applied it over the whole circle. Again, I did not apply the ink evenly because I wanted to have some shade variation. I was happy with the ink application, I sprinkled water over the circle and soaked it up with a paper towel. And again, you can finish here, I think it looks pretty good already, but I wanted to add another layer. So I took the rusty hinge and I blended it over the circle. The spots that I created were covered, but you could still see them, which is a nice effect. One thing to keep in mind, if the lighter spots are still damp, this can activate the color and it might affect the next ink application. Waiting a bit and using less ink for the additional layers might be a good option. Again, I added more droplets, but this time the paper towel left behind a weird impression. This never happened to me before. Here you can see it in a close-up. I kind of like it at the bottom, but not so much at the top. So what I did, I lightly covered the area at the top with the rusty hinge. And if you don't like it, you can just add another layer and try again. The spots will be visible, but not so much, and I think they actually enhance the look. I tried to do the crater again, but it did not work. And then I realized that I didn't need to do this at all, because I will be covering it anyway. So I will skip it. I wanted to paint a bunch of fir tree silhouettes in front of the moon. And I forgot to press the record button, just at the beginning, you did not miss really much, I only painted the ground and one tree. For the ground, I first made a stripe with a clean water and along the top edge, I used a black watercolor paint, which combined with the clean water and created a really nice effect. But you can also paint the ground at the end. To paint the trees, there are two ways I paint these trees. One I start with a line and the other one I do without a line. The rest I do the same. The branches I paint in a zigzag way and I paint them in a very quick dabbing motion with just the tip of my brush. And I painted the trees along the line in different sizes. The 
By the way, this moon technique was a complete accident. When I was editing an old video with a Halloween card, in that video I was creating a background using distressings, and as you do with the distressings, you add the droplets. But they didn't come out as I wanted, so I covered it with a second layer, but they were still visible. And as I was editing it, I thought, this looks like a moon. I have to try it out. And I think this technique is a pretty good idea to create a moon. I think it looks great and it's way easier than painting the moon with watercolors. At least in my experience. So I finished up painting the trees and then I added a little bit more black across the ground just to make it darker. The moons are finished. To make these into cards, the first moon I adhered on top of a card base using a double-sided tape. And for the greeting, I like to make thank you cards for my first card of the year, but you can use any other sentiment. I die cut the word thanks four times out of a white cardstock, and then I adhered them on top of each other and then on top of the card base. And here you can see the card in a close-up. For the second card, I stamped a thank you sentiment with a black ink and I added the panel on top of a card base. I used a liquid glue to add the panel and the card is finished. And here you can see it in a close up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Here you can see a few more cards that I tried. It is a really fun and very simple technique and I hope you will try it yourself. If you would like to see another distress ink technique idea, check out this video on your screen where I use the distress inks to create the bokeh effect. So that is all for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in my next video.